Hey everyone, this is Roman Prokopchuk and this is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast. Today I have with me Jean Piero Scatolon. Jean Piero is a speaker and conversation facilitator. Born in Lima, Peru, he immigrated to the US when he was 14, served in the army for three years, and spent most of 2010 in a combat tour in Afghanistan. Around 2014, he was diagnosed with PTSD. While talking to his therapist, he discovered the art of genuine conversations and their potential for healing and self-discovery. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. My pleasure. So tell me a little bit about your journey. How did you get to where you are today besides obviously that intro? <laughs> All right. So uh, the main thing is that I consider myself an international person. I was born in Peru. When I was 14 years of age, my family decided to immigrate to the U.S. And one of the biggest things that I wanted to do was to fit in, to be part of the culture, to be uh, an American as much as I could. And well, I've tried very hard, but I, coming to the U.S. at 14, learning the language, learning the culture, I, I was never able to get rid of my accent. So that's just my trademark. That's just who I am. And it's not until the last decade, probably, that I began to embrace that. that is, that's who I am. That's where I came from. I came from Peru to the U.S. I went to high school. Uh, at the time, I was a religious. Uh, I was very involved with my religion at the time. I'm not anymore, but I served a missionary uh, service mission for two years. And then in my mid-20s, I got married. And uh, I, I have three beautiful kids from my first marriage. And I found myself in a situation in 2000, uh, 2010, 2009, to 2008, 2010, where I just couldn't, uh, I was not able to find a good job because of the downturn of the economy. And I wanted, uh, I wanted a good job, I wanted benefits. And the one thing available, even though I was 32, was the US military. And I, I just told myself, uh, I should just ask to see if that opportunity is available to me. And immediately they told me, yeah, no problem. Yeah, we can take you in, uh, send me on to basic training. I made it through basic training. I was afraid that I was not going to make it because I was too old. But it's amazing how when you want something, you can become so adaptable that if you have the will, you can just overcome physical and mental barriers. And I graduated from basic training. I ended up in Germany as my first duty station. And then within weeks, I was in Afghanistan in combat. And if if you know me or you know any of my friends, uh, they would tell you that I'm the least likely person to be a combat veteran, a combat soldier. But uh, I was in the midst of all of that, and I got to see a lot of pain and suffering from my side and also amongst the people that I was uh, supposed to be protecting or helping. And uh, it wasn't until 2014 that I was dealing with a lot of uh, turmoil inside that I ended up seeing a psychologist and for the next 10 months after that, I, uh, I saw my psychologist every other week. And one thing that I discovered that he did for me was that he allowed me or he created the space for me to speak. And as I was speaking and listening to myself, I began to put myself together. And now I'm a huge proponent of people having conversation. conversations. If they're struggling with something, especially emotionally, they need to reach out to a medical professional or just someone they trust and start speaking, they start articulating what is it that they're feeling inside. And I think that is the beginning of their healing journey and self-discovery. Yeah. And like you said, with therapy or, you know, you go to a psychologist, a therapist or what have you, they don't kind of give the answers for you. They're the guides and you kind of talk through your problems and come to solutions and realizations yourself. So it's kind of like, you know, a discovery journey and figuring out what makes you tick and understanding some of the things in your background. Obviously, some people have things buried in their past that, you know, their brain has kind of put back there for protecting themselves from like, you know, a psychological perspective, different pain and abuse that they've completely forgotten in childhood, and even teens and adulthood, but kind of coming to terms with it, talking it out and figuring what, what it is and you know, what it could do in terms of their life harmfully, I think it's really important. 100%. Is that there's all these little things that we think they didn't affect us when we were little or as we were growing up. In my case, my father left when I was a child. Well, I mean, I, I, could, I was not even speaking when my father left. 
And I grew up with the notion that, no, that didn't affect me. I just, I turned out all right. And, and no, there's all this uh, subconscious language, subconscious uh, conversations that happen as far as our self-worth. What did that mean to me? Was I not lovable? Was I not uh, worthy to have that? And, uh, and they begin to manifest in our lives uh, in many ways. I like this quote by Carl Jung, who said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. And the best way in my case that I've discovered to be able to manifest the unconscious is talk. Talk and you're gonna do it poorly, but the more you speak to someone you trust, a psychologist or maybe someone you trust, uh, the more you're gonna begin to discover you. And the more you discover you, the more you know yourself, then the better you can navigate through life because life is difficult. Life has a whole bunch of trials and tribulations. And the better you know you, the better you can manage and discover all these little opportunities where you can find significance in the midst of uh, trial and tribulation. Yeah, I agree. And those little things get compounded over time. The things you think are in- insignificant, like your father leaving when you were young. My, I mean, my father was around but he was never technically there you know he was abusive uh, physically and uh, verbally to my mom and I saw stuff like that so although you think as a child you see that it's not impacting you it starts coming out in one way or another at different parts of your life it doesn't have to be you know let's say in your 20s or 30s maybe you turn 40 and something gets triggered so each of those things get compounded and if you have a lot of traumatic events that you kind of bury and think they don't affect you eventually they'll come out and start affecting your relationships, you know, your work yeah. and things that you didn't even know they could uh, impact. Yes, I, I, I totally agree with you. One of the things, for example, that I can think of is I grew up with this notion that I kept telling myself, growing up without a father didn't affect me, but I kept saying, I don't want to be like my father. I don't want to be like my father. And when I, once I get married, I'm just going to be so different than my father. And now looking back, I made a lot of the same decisions my father made and I ended up acting out his story. And now I'm beginning to understand, wow, I was so harsh on my father and he was just trying to figure it out as I am trying to figure it out through my life. And uh, I've heard this quote from this uh, doctor, uh, John uh, Sarno, I believe his name was. And he said that it is never too late to have a happy childhood. But in order for you to do that, you have to re-examine your life and go back and see, uh, you know, give people the benefit of the doubt because we're all trying to figure it out. Yeah, I agree. And I think like I had the same notion when I was young that, you know, when I grow up, I'm not going to be the same kind of, you know, father, role, male role model that my dad was. Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, I think that's one reason that I've, become a foster parent and try to do my best with that and then since June 2018 having 20 kids in our home and then dealing with things uh you know that compounded on that getting into foster care going through five miscarriages in the last three years to get to that so if you don't take care of things or traumatic things when they happen they're gonna you know seep into different things in your relationships and and something like that obviously impacts your marriage and you know people go through it and end up you know ending relationships because it's so traumatic and they don't know how to deal with those situations right um, i agree and you have to be paying attention for all the red flags if you go through life saying i'm okay i'm okay i'm okay i find that that's a little white lie that could keep you stuck uh in many instances uh some of the red flags that some of the people that were closest to me some of the people that I went to combat with. With When we came back, uh, they started telling me, jean you don't smile like you used to. Maybe you should consider go talking to someone. And, I, and okay, I, I listened to it for a little bit. Uh, I went to see a therapist a couple of times when I was still in the service, but then I said, okay, it's just common sense. I just need to focus on common sense. Uh, but then more people kept telling me, what happened to you? You don't smile like you used to. Okay, so those are the little red flags or telling uh, things that 
were warning me, okay, I'm not showing up the way I desire to show up in the world. Maybe there is something to what the feedback that people are giving me. And uh, at the end of the day, I think you, you may have mentioned this earlier, uh, the therapist cannot do the work for you. They can only listen to you and it's up to you to do the work. And it is a lot of work to put yourself together. Yep. And it's uh, ever changing and, you know, progressing. There is no end result. So you don't end up this person. And then, you know, this person is, is great for the rest of your life. Obviously, it's a continuous journey and an ever changing kind of process. And I think everybody should strive to be kind of the best version of themselves the next day. So waking up, you're a little different you become better in one way or another, either mm -hmm. you develop some kind of new skill or knowledge, figure out building uh, soft skills like emotional empathy, but waking up and moving forward in that sense of becoming a human being, a better human being, I think everybody mm -hmm. should strive for. Yes, 100%. Uh, we, we're always evolving. We're always changing. Uh, one of the when you, when, when you hear people talking about relationships and, and why they fail, you always hear the complaint, oh, you're not the same person I fell in love with. And actually, it should be that way for the positive. You, you're not going to be the same person you are today, uh, tomorrow, a year from now, uh, 10 years from now. You're always evolving. And this is how also we need to analyze our beliefs and our, our notions. Okay. Who's speaking right now? Am I the college kid from five, 10 years ago? Or am I the person that I am today? And what do I believe today as opposed to five, 10, however many years ago? Because we're always changing. Yeah, I agree. So what motivates you to succeed? What motivates, uh, that idea that I could be a little more tomorrow than I, that I am today. That idea, knowing that I'm not a constant, I developed this quote, this saying that the light at the end of the tunnel, it's you. It's always been you. Because we all have this optimal idea, uh, this idea of this optimal self, who we want to be. And the more we become a little more that optimal idea of us, we're able to navigate through uh, the dark times in life. Uh, so th this idea that I could become a little more and that tomorrow could be a little brighter if I become a little better, uh, gives me the, the strength to keep going every day. Yeah, I agree. And obviously it's not a easy journey. I think things like social media do a bad job of portraying kind of the authenticity and rawness of situations and how people got to where they are now, how they became successful, how they yeah. overcame certain things, because obviously most of it is for show, a vanity, a, just a limiting view of some of the positive things or events of somebody's life. And right. I think it's important to understand kind of that nitty gritty, you know, what actually makes someone who they are. That's kind of why I give that platform on my podcast to really know what makes someone tick and kind of, you know, the bad and good they had to go through. And obviously, like you said, it's an ever-changing uh, process and ongoing journey. Yes, uh, something that just came to mind is this notion that we, are, we can be self-made and there is no such thing. You're always standing on the shoulders of giants. You're always uh, standing on the people who came before you and went through struggle and did certain things. And then you were able to use that, that knowledge or wisdom to advance yourself a little more and a little more. And this is why you need to surround yourself with people that will elevate you as opposed to uh, people who are always complaining about how things should be different. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's that thing you're, you are who your five people, you know, closest people around you. I mean, that's not necessarily only because the sayings, you know, your net worth is your, your, your network is your net worth, mm -hmm. but um, it's also your mindset and being positive because if you, you're hungry or you want to change, but you surround yourself with five people that bring you down and are negative, eventually that will over time bring you down regardless how motivated, how positive you are. If that's your existing environment and the variables that you're presented, those will impact you and drag you down over time. Very true. Very true. And also those people that you, you keep around you, also the way they speak and the way they allow you to speak because 
sometimes you share with people, these are my values and this is what I stand for. And then you do otherwise. The people who really care about you will be like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That's not consistent with what you said you wanted to become. And then you're like, oh, you're right. Thank you. So you create a support system and it's vice versa. Some days you have your, your apps some, or your highs and sometimes you have your lows. And sometimes you will be there for them and sometimes they will be there for you because we're not a constant. Yeah, I agree. So what's one thing you may have seen as a weakness in yourself in the past that you've turned around and utilized as a strength today? The, uh, the fact that I, I tend to go to, uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is like lack of self, self-esteem. I tend to go to, yeah, but... Uh, because of my background, because of where I came from, because of my accent, because of uh, I, I, I dropped out of college. And, and then I, uh, I don't acknowledge all the triumphs that I've had throughout my life. So knowing that I, I tend to go there, we all have different, because of our personality types, we have certain tendencies. Some people tend to be more, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a type, you know, uh, alpha type, and some people that are a little more emotional. I tend to be more emotional. That's what actually, that's what allows me to connect with people. But at the same time, I get overwhelmed with emotion. And sometimes I tend to go to, uh, oh, well, I'm not everything I could be. Uh, and this is why it's so important for me to create a, a network of people who will remind me, Jean Piero, you said you wanted to do this. You said you, this is what you stand for. And then I am, thank you, thank you. And then I can refocus and go forward. Yeah, I think uh, most people struggle struggle with some kind of anxiety or insecurity. And some of the things, like you said, uh, an accent, something else that they think, you know, they're self-conscious about or, you know, people will think about them a certain way. But kind of using that, I guess, negative notion of that trait and turning it into a positive understanding that there's other people in that situation that may be thinking the same way and it's kind of up to you to show that you know you're overcoming that you're using it as a strength and you're succeeding with that yeah i i yes that that is true i believe that sometimes the things that makes you amazing and wonderful it's also the thing that makes you suffer a little bit and like i said part of my personality being uh, emotional helps me to connect with people but sometimes i could be drowned uh, with emotion and uh that's why it's important to have a, a good balance of people. Like one of the reasons why my wife and I uh, have a, such an amazing relationship is because we're so different and we, we, uh, we, balance, we balance the relationship. There's you, there's your partner, and then there's this thing called relationship. And uh, her way of being, she's more assertive, she's more uh, pragmatic and me being emotional gives this beautiful balance where we both support each other and compensate for each other's weaknesses. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of that, uh, that healthy balance. So mm-hmm. what's one piece of advice you can leave with the audience, personal or professional? I would say personal and professional would be that it's important for us to speak truth and whatever that means. And sometimes we need to speak poorly and to wherever to articulate what's eating us inside. Because sometimes we don't know. One thing that I learned through uh, being diagnosed with PTSD and doing the work to put myself together is that uh, PTSD, trauma, assault, uh, sadness, uh, poor self-esteem, they all have something in common. They don't feel good. But until we're able to properly identify what is it that we're feeling today, uh, some, someday you may think that you're angry, but actually you are feeling, uh, you're feeling like you're not enough. I mean, they both feel bad, but you need to identify, this is what I'm feeling today. Uh, then you're able to push against whatever you're feeling. And if you don't have the ability or the means to go see a mental health professional, find someone you trust and speak to them, not so they can fix you. Sometimes you need to say, don't even try to give me advice, please. All I need is a sounding board, someone to speak to. And it's very hard because you have to be vulnerable and then somebody who's listening needs, needs to resist 
the urge to give you advice. Sometimes all we need to do is speak. And if that is not available, available then write it down. Put, it on, put your thoughts on paper and examine them. They say that, uh, I forgot who said this, but an, an examined life is not a life worth living. We need to uh, examine what is it that it's eating us. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's, it's permitting yourself to have those feelings and kind of coming to terms and, and telling yourself it's okay. And then creating kind of in your mind kind of a safe place for that, even though it's painful and negative, to feel it and express it and know it's there, but don't let it uh, transition out of your mind and go out of control like a fire and impact everything else in your life. 100%. Yeah. Give yourself permission to, to feel the way you're feeling, constrain it in a time, schedule it. Okay. Maybe I am feeling bad today. Okay. I'm going to examine that for the next 30 minutes and then do something else. Uh, because we could definitely be drowned in a specific emotion and it could just ruin the sequence of events that will there are to come and then it would uh, affect the mood of other people because we show up with a specific kind of energy and it's contagious and sometimes we can bring the room down uh, we can bring the room down like the uh, the feeling in the room the this uh, and we want to be i think we should aim to be the light of the room instead of the the darkness in the room yeah i agree so I really appreciate you coming on today. Can you let the audience know how they can find you? Absolutely. I have a, I have a what do you call it, a landing page called uh, Apex Conversations, uh, where people can find me. I have all my different uh, social media links on there, or find me at Giampiero M. Scatalon uh, on Facebook or G. Scatalon on Instagram. And one of my biggest goals is to help people promote this idea that people need to express what they're feeling inside to have genuine conversations and if they need someone to talk to or someone just to listen to them and they need to they want to have a conversation with me uh, i will be more than happy to to listen and to to be there uh, not to fix their problems but just just to listen because the work that people need to do it's for them to do and to discover what that is but it doesn't come until we articulate what we have to say, what we're feeling. Awesome. Thanks again for stopping by.